Hey guys, welcome to a Donnie Graham Builds video. In this video, I managed to absolutely botch a miter box glue up. I poured the wrong epoxy and I have a horrible time getting these hinges to line up properly. But despite all that, I managed to make one of the coolest projects I've ever done. Let's get into the video. So when I told my wife I wanted to build a whiskey cabinet, I got laughed at, which I thought was rude. Then she reminded me that I don't even like whiskey which is true. So maybe her laughter wasn't totally unfounded and maybe a whiskey cabinet isn't the best idea for me. But then I got to thinking about it and truth be told, I didn't really like my first beer either, but I enjoy it now. I also really didn't care for my first glass of wine when I had it, but I like wine now. Frankly, anything from a mid shelf Cabernet to an old classic standby of 2.99 Winking Owl from Aldi, they're all pretty much fair game. Now, don't misunderstand. I am no connoisseur. If you put the world's top rated IPA in front of me, along with a PBR, I'd probably opt for the PBR. Look, all I'm trying to say is, I think all alcohol is an acquired taste, and very few people are born instantly enjoying a bottle of whiskey. Except perhaps Jason from Bourbon Moth. I'm convinced that guy might have had whiskey in his bottles as a baby. Anyway, let's get back to the build. What we're focusing on here is the internal cabinet carcass that's going to house the whiskey and the glasses. I decided to make this out of walnut because, well, I had leftover walnut and walnut is a classy material. I also decided to use rabbits and dados to bring this all together because I thought it elevated the piece a lot better than your standard butt joints. Now, I did use referential measurements, AKA the actual whiskey bottles. Now, I had no whiskey before this started and I picked up these four all based on recommendations. So I would love to know your input in the comments below. But these are the four I landed on and I wanted to make sure that I had a couple skinnier slots and a couple wider slots to accommodate new bottles whenever I would work through one. And that would kind of give me some direction on what to get next, assuming it had to fit the space. Once I had that figured out, I could start making room for the glasses. I landed on a total of four glasses for the cabinet because four is a good number of glasses and I had the vertical space. That made it easy. Something I realized during the glue up is rabbits and dados really make the glue up a lot less stressful. Everything comes together pretty square. It does take a handful of clamps, but overall it is a way better process than trying to use miters, which you'll see the headaches we ran into later. But for now, since we're on a YouTube video, we can skip forward to when the glue is dry and we can take a closer look at our box. So I'd say we're due for an update. Our liquor cabinet carcass is made, but I need to work on the back panel, which is over here. This is actually leftover stock from my old walnut desk. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you didn't see the last video, definitely go check that out. It's pretty cool. But I made a new desk and therefore this is just old material that would have ended up on the burn pile, but it's walnut, so we kept it, and now we're trying to reuse it and keep this as affordable as we can. So this will just pop right into the back. I left my center divider, sh divider shallow, so everything will fit nice and flush. We'll get that sanded and probably pre-finished before we permanently attach it, because trying to finish those little nooks and crannies will be a huge pain. Uh, but now we can turn our attention away from the cabinet and start milling up all of the white oak that's going to make the actual cabinet carcass, not just the liquor case holder. I'll throw a 3D image here so you can kind of see more accurately what we're talking about. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to send you back through another milling montage because I'm a benevolent YouTuber. But one bit of advice I will impart, if you'll allow, is twofold. First, always label your parts. It's far too easy to lose track of which pieces go where and accidentally mixing something up. Second, when you're making a paneled box, wrapping the grain is obviously the pro move and what you'd like to do. But if grain wrapping isn't an option due to material restrictions, which is the case that I'm in, at least cut all of your boards that are going to make up your panel to the same widths. Maybe this is a known ideology or simply an assumed practice because most woodworkers who are building boxes are wrapping the grain. And when you wrap the grain, that automatically assumes that your boards are going to have the same width. But I can't tell you the number of times I've been building a box and I don't have enough material to wrap the grain, but I cut the individual boards to different widths to make up my full panels and the glue up just comes together looking goofy. It's not terrible, but it's not nearly as good as it could be and it's one of those small things that can definitely take your skill set to the next level. Let's cut to a quick animation for those of you who are more visual learners. I mean something like this where all the boards are clean, they line up, the lines continue around the corner to the next side of the panel. 
and avoiding doing something like this, where the panels are the same length, sure, but the individual boards that make up the panel are kind of here and there, a little bit big, a little bit small, just to meet the end result. It looks kind of clunky and not nearly as good as it could have been. In my case, with using quarter sawn material, the grain is moving so much, with good glue joints, the differences in any board widths are nearly impossible to see. However, if you were using a face grain board with that natural cathedral style grain, these differences would really jump out at you in a not so great way. Something to keep in mind. With the panels made, I set my table saw and I ripped all four to the exact same width. Then I cross cut the uneven sides away. And finally, I started in on cutting my 45s in order to glue up these miters. And that's when everything went south. But I won't spoil it for you. Please, go ahead and enjoy all of this beautiful prep work, the attention to detail, and the nearly epic failure that follows. Oh man, this glue up just kicked my butt. Holy cow. It's like these little corner clings only do so much. If you have any kind of bow in your board or misalignment, then it, it they're cute, right? They're just a suggestion. Uh, I, I'm pretty square, all things considered. I'm also out of clamps I can use to pull lengthwise. Um, so where we are, where we're at, I might be able to do a little bit more, we'll see. Uh, I think one of the issues was, cause I got these, these were totally flat panels, but I just installed a mini split so I can heat the shop when I'm out here working. But the issue is that changes the ambient temperature in the garage back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that I think is gonna cause a problem with the wood adjusting to it. So I'm not really sure the best way to navigate that other than to not use it, which defeats the whole purpose of installing that. And it's a huge quality of life improvement. So I don't, yeah, we're gonna figure out what to do there. But anyway, we're boxed up. We're looking pretty boxy uh, and we're moving on. So to no one's surprise, the cabinet ended up out of square. Thankfully, not by a whole lot. So the gambler that I am, I thought maybe if I clamped the corners and very slowly and carefully crank them tight, I could ease out some of that out of squareness. Now, I would not be overstating it if I told you I was sweating bullets during this wild, arguably stupid idea. But I thought if I could pressure those panels into square, I would be able to add the vertical partition and the horizontal shelf in such a way that it would lock them square. Sort of like forcing in a known square back panel into a box that isn't quite square itself. Surprisingly, this idea didn't totally fail. Now, it wasn't totally a success either, that would have been too easy, but it did help bring those corners a bit closer to 90. I'm not really sure about the longevity of this solution, but since this piece is for me, I'll be here when and if it ever breaks. So there's that. Moving along, I wanna turn my attention to the epoxy portion of the project. Now, if you'll recall in the 3D model, the cabinet face had a more organic river-like look and I ultimately decided to move away from that because I prefer a modern geometric design. So I opted to use thin walnut strips alternating with strips of black epoxy. For those of my viewers who are unfamiliar with how epoxy works, there are several different types out there depending on what you're trying to do. Some formulas cure within five minutes, some 24 hours, and some take even three to five days. When I purchased my epoxy, I thought I had bought the one that cured nearly completely inside of 24 hours or so. So I instantly began to panic when I came back the next day and it was still very gummy. I assumed that I had botched the ratio or something had gone wrong. Then I reread the container and realized that I had accidentally bought the three to five day cure time version. Now, as far as bonehead mistakes go, this could have been much worse. This ultimately just meant that I spent time pouring several layers when I really could have probably just done the entire thing in one shot. Not a huge deal, but did end up wasting a little bit of time on that front. 
With plenty of time to kill, until the epoxy is cured, we could go ahead and get our legs done. I'm using walnut here and ripping it down to length, and then I'm going to cross cut it on the table saw. One thing I did notice while I was doing this, but I do notice now that I'm looking at the film, is that the support piece I have for my off cut is too narrow, and there's too much room for that piece to tip down and catch the blade in a bad way. Figured it'd be best to mention that now before the safety police flood the comment section and let me know how horrible of a woodworker and influencer I am. Now, those things might be accurate, but at least they won't be accurate for that reason. Frankly, what I'm really hoping to see flood the comments section is whiskey recommendations, or better yet, whiskey cocktail recommendations. I definitely don't want to sound like a poser, though that ship may have already sailed, but I love the idea of a home office that doubles as a modern whiskey lounge. All right. But go with me here. Imagine finishing up a stressful work day and having a nice glass of whiskey only a few steps away. Not to mention the insane level of satisfaction when pressing the lift kit remote and seeing the cabinet function. But I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself. But I'm picturing something between Nick Miller from New Girl mixed with James Bond. I'm fairly certain that's the ideal combination of personalities. As you've noticed so far, I've really kind of skimmed past the leg construction, and that's because I've made these legs before, I called them out in detail in my bookshelf video, and they were actually originally pulled from either Chris Salamone or Johnny Brook. I'm not really sure who built their cabinet first, but they both have bookshelves that have this leg design, and I made the same bookshelf with the same leg design, and I really like it, so I incorporated it into this whiskey cabinet. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what's actually happening on screen, so let's dive into that. If you're a woodworker or honestly any kind of quote maker, then you're likely accustomed to running into your own fair share of project setbacks and unforeseen obstacles. In my case, that's typically in large part due to my inability to properly plan ahead. So what you're seeing now is my mediocre attempt at solving the latest project issue on the fly. Unfortunately, I assumed that the TV lift kit that I chose was going to fit inside this cabinet on its low setting, no problem. What past me didn't know is that all TV lift kits are around 28 inches to 37 inches tall at their lowest setting, and my cabinet is only 20 inches tall. I'm sure even the viewers who failed math can see where I went wrong. While my initial instinct was to scrap the entire box and start over with new materials, saner heads managed to prevail. I decided to consider this project a prototype. It'll still be an awesome piece, but definitely something I wouldn't feel comfortable selling to a client as it is. Instead, I'm going to use this opportunity as a way to figure out firsthand what kind of issues come with this type of design. And ideally, this kind of thinking would help me to avoid similar failures down the road, which serves as a perfectly natural transition. If you're still around and you've been enjoying the content thus far, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. Right now, my channel kind of toggles between custom furniture builds along with a little DIY home renovation. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit the subscribe button because I'd love to have you along for the journey. And for those of you who have been around for a while, I would really appreciate your honest feedback on this video style. Up to this point, my channel growth has been pretty slow, which is okay, all things considered. But I do want to try to introduce new styles to maybe pull in a larger, more consistent audience. That's why this video format has really shifted away from the step-by-step -step narration of what's happening on screen and is focusing more on what I have that no other YouTube does. Myself. It might sound a bit egotistical to think that my personality alone could convince more people to subscribe and invest in my channel, but the reality is there are hundreds of woodworking YouTubers, most of which could probably build this cabinet a right side better than I am. So I'm going to try to redirect the channel to share a little bit more about my own thought process and why I choose certain builds over others and do a better job of just telling the story. So all that said, I would honestly love some of your feedback on what you enjoyed and even what you didn't like as much. It's all valuable and even from the trolls, as I told my last spirited commenter, it's all engagement for the algorithm. So let's keep chatting. But diving back into the video, right now I'm just getting the legs attached. I had a few people ask me in the bookshelf video if these legs were sturdy enough or strong enough to hold the bookshelf if I had any problems long term. And these things are stout. They're made out of solid walnut. They're an inch and a half by an inch and a half. And I have three screws in the front leg and the back part of the leg in order to keep everything secure. So I definitely don't think we're going to have any issues from a structural integrity standpoint. As a reference, I've had the bookshelves for three years now. They've gone through a move and had the crap beat out of them by a toddler and four-year-old, and they're still going strong. Once the lift was installed, I could attach the back panel just using a few screws, and the carcass was basically done. 
And now that it's been a full four days since the initial epoxy pour, the cabinet faces were finally ready to be taken out of the mold. It's always a bit of a gamble using epoxy. You don't know if it's going to cure properly or leak or be a total nightmare to remove from the mold. Now, there are several ways to limit any potential horrible outcomes. But one thing that I do when I'm dealing with a smaller pour is line the entire mold with this Tyvek tape. The tape isn't exactly cheap, but frankly, it's a lot cheaper than losing epoxy due to a leak or spending several hours chiseling or power planning your melamine board off the workpiece. Thankfully, in my case, the cabinet doors popped out without much fuss at all and the epoxy was completely cured. Thank goodness. Now let's time to take a look at the fit, and unfortunately another issue rears its ugly head. Or actually, I suppose this is a continuation of a previous issue. This box isn't exactly square which means I had to custom cut the door while also trying to maintain the continuous grain and the epoxy stripes. This was a major pain, but I'll let past Donnie explain what was going on in the moment. For the drama. All right, so we're almost on the home stretch. I'm running into an issue here. So I wanted to have a pull-out drawer at the top for no in particular reason. It just seemed like it'd be a good feature, an extra little drawer to put some stuff in. I find that the door with these particular hinges will catch. If I close it a little bit, it'll clear and open. So I'm not functionally worried about that. Again, if this was a client piece, I would adjust it differently. But since it's for me, it, it would be fine. The issue I'm really having here is because I needed to bring, you can see I drilled another hole for hinges, which sucks. But because I needed to bring the hinge down in order to clear the drawer and to avoid putting my hinge in epoxy, uh, when I go to close, the drawer hangs. So I think what I'm going to have to do is to take this hinge, the top hinge here, and move it up past where I originally had it, because I had it in the top one to begin with, and I still hit the drawer box. I'll have to move it past that and up higher in order to prevent, to give it more stability up here to prevent the door from sagging. And I'm wondering if the walnut that I used as little spacer blocks in here to keep my stripes evenly spaced will be enough to drill into and not crack any epoxy. I'm gonna give it a try. This could go horribly wrong, um, but we're gonna send it and we'll see how it turns out. After what I'd considered to be far too much time adjusting these hinges, I finally managed to get a nice clean fit that didn't compromise the grain continuity or the epoxy strips. With the fit where I wanted it, it was time to apply finish to the doors and get this project wrapped up. Now, like I mentioned before, this project definitely landed in the prototype bucket, but I'm still really pleased with it despite the issues. I was able to attempt something new with a lot of fun known and unknown elements while still pushing my skill set a little. Not only that, but I've taken another huge step in achieving my home office slash modern whiskey lounge goal. This piece is sleek, it fits perfectly in the space, and it's exactly what I was hoping to add to my office. As always, I'm always open to feedback in the comments, so feel free to let me know what you think of the cabinet, what you think of the new video format, and most importantly, what your go-to slash favorite whiskey is. Thanks for checking out the video, and until next time, get out there and start your own project, even if it makes you look like a bit of a poser.